real life street stars. We in here with Juan Poppy. What it is, boy? What's good, man? What's good? For all the niggas that don't know, man, deaf, dumb, stupid, living up on a rock, man. Tell them where you from. I'm from Fort Worth, Texas. Meadowbrook. 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 Yo, exit, exit, exit 29. Exit 29, exit definitely. 29? So, sure. Are you are you familiar with uh the young uh Phenom Go Brazy that just coming out of there? Uh somebody just put me on. Skinny Luciano just put me on uh uh the Brazy. La homie, it's shit hard. Definitely friend of Brooke. I seen him around. I seen some of his little partners around for sure. I'm older than them though, so shit. I, I see them young niggas. All right, man. Let's let's take it back, man. Um, before we get into it, cause we gonna get into it, man. Take us through Fort Worth, man, in that East Side Meadowbrook area. Uh, in the Brook, you know you got Brentwood there. Uh, we you know we still consider John T. White that whole area. You got uh Hanley on both sides. Shit. The Brook, you know what I'm saying? It's lovely. It's good, man. Haircuts, bad bitches, getting to some money. Definitely got some hustlers. You know, we more on some style shit. We like to dress, get clean, you know what I'm saying? Metal Brook. That's what it's like over there. What made you jump into the music game, man? I've been rapping a long time, bro, since like 12. 12. So, take us back. So, that, you was in school then, shit. Yeah, I started out freestyling. Like, most of the people they know me, anybody who know me for a long time, know I've been rapping and doing this shit for a long time, way before this shit. So let's get into uh 14k, cause that that's it look like you you wearing the apparel right now. Yeah, of course, 14k man for sure. Okay, um, that's I kind of got a, uh, I kind of noticed it from Skinny Luciano. You know what I'm saying? Like y'all whole movement. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Explain to me that movement and and how it got as big as it got. You know what I'm saying? Um. Uh, I met Skinny uh, like eight years ago. Probably um, we linked up on some music shit. We had a manager called Don, and it was MC Light, ex husband. And he was, we got, we all got in the group. It was me, Skinny, and Mia Eliani. We got into a group called uh, Star Gang. Me, Skinny, Mia, and we just started rapping. That's how it all started. And then once we kind of all had split up, me and Skinny branched off. We started, kept, kept rapping, kept running in the Cam Music Group, who I'm signed to today. We we got it. we started this in Cam Studio, you know, around 2011, 2012. Yeah. And we just came up by making a little team, you know, music shit. We like gold. Me, Skinny, and Johnny Dandy was so crazy. Johnny ho ass man. Yeah, we are gonna get into all that. So we all started this shit, and um, you know, that's that's how this shit happened. 14K. So what would you say was the song that kind of elevated y'all to get to get that recognition? We really didn't have no song. We was just going by style. Uh, 14K really didn't start popping until 2016 yeah. when my boy Hustle Rich, Derek Richmond, got into 14K and he really put the brand behind it. That's what you see today, the clothes. He he forced us to, you know what I'm saying, turn it into a brand. So what would you say, y'all, for the Fort Worth music scene, what were y'all responsible for? Like, what would you say y'all brought to the game? To the rap game? Yeah, in, in, in that Fort Worth area. In Fort Worth? Uh... I just feel like Fort Worth kind of popped off. It started really getting noticeable off beef, beef rap, you know. And uh, but I feel like Fort Worth been having music abilities. One of my close friends, Tommy Burns Jr., uh, Twisted Black Son, his daddy was been going in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I, I grew up same middle school, me and his son, same age, my partner. You know what I'm saying? So Fort Worth been had the music, but I feel like we really popped and got noticeable off beefing, beef rap. I feel like we got that from Louisiana, you know what I'm saying, that, that whole era. Now, speaking of beef, you and Johnny Damn D, right. one of the more entertaining beefs, you know what I'm saying, it was it, it's, uh, shots on both sides. Right. Um, how did that beef even come about, you know what I'm saying? Y'all were former bandmates and all that. Yeah, definitely not bandmates, but, you know, shit. I feel like the beef was just there from the beginning, you know what I'm saying, like, we just being honest right now, shit. I don't know if y'all ever experienced being around a nigga that was always competitive with you. He just wanted to be competitive. If you if you jump, he want to jump higher. You know what I'm saying? If you do this, he want. And I know I noticed that behavior in him early in the game, and I still gave him the game, and I still embraced him, and I still do, did whatever I can to help with image. And like I said, I've been doing this. You know, so I was D Blaze before I was even Juan Poppy. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people know that name, so. It was just on some hating ass shit. That's all it was, bitches. Fucking with bitches, egos. We really started getting popular. You know what I'm saying? He he older than me, been doing this shit longer than I have. So f for him to 
reach some success and start building a buzz, it just created a lot of egos and shit. You know what I'm saying? But me and Johnny fought. We already boxed off record. He know that. We already fought. Skinny was there. We fought at the studio. Who won? Shit, man. We was here boxing, man. This is what it is, man. <laughs> Nobody win when the family feud, man. Yeah. It was on some shit like that. Like, it was on some, we was we was high, we were mad at each other. Fuck it, come outside. Fuck this shit. You know what I'm saying? We going to the gravel. Over with, man. Usually when niggas do it's that Oh, that's, man, with. man, Johnny, Johnny my dog forever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm very, very proud of Johnny. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wouldn't dare get up here and, you know what I'm saying, spread nothing else but love because I like to see the boy shine, honestly. Hey, I ain't going to lie. The one thing that that beef um, did do was it showcased the rapping ability because like, you had a track. I can't remember the track, but that bitch was super hard. I was like, man, that yeah. nigga rapping his ass target, off. Target practice. Yeah, yeah, I was like, that nigga rapping his ass off. Appreciate it. So, I mean, that did, you know, showcase the, you know, your lyrical ability and shit like that. So, um, after that, you know what I'm saying, the aftermath for that, like, um, I seen you went to L.A., you know what I'm yeah, saying? You yeah. got a dollar in the dream, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. What was that whole experience like, bro? Shit. Shit, going, going for it. I really got robbed, you know what I'm saying? After that whole ass song I dropped, some shit got ugly, you know what I'm saying? And shit, I felt like once I got robbed, I ain't never been robbed before, number one. You dig what I'm saying? I used to wear a lot of jewelry. Anybody who know me, I keep rings, chains on. You dig what I'm saying? And so... When I, and niggas deleted my music. You know what I'm saying? I got robbed, niggas deleted my music too. So a lot of shit had fucked up. So I wasn't just finna go to LA. I never was just finna do that. I decided that because music is all I have. And when, once I had scooped that low, I was like, I had to make a power move instantly. You know what I'm saying? That shit definitely changed my life. Definitely gave me super, super game. You dig? I already had game. So when I got that, you dig? It was just shit. It's what you see right now. So most people go to LA, you know what I'm saying? They don't come back. Yeah. What made you come back to the city? Uh, I came back to the city cause I like I'm really jug God finesse. I got the third on the middle of my eye. I'm I'm no dummy. I went there. I seen the game. I seen how niggas was living. I met niggas who got blue checks on Instagram. I, I cut hair too, so I'm cutting rappers hair. I'm doing it for free. You know what I'm saying? I'm doing all type of shit. And so when I really seen the lifestyle, I really just embraced it. That's what I do anyway. I got the third eye. I'm gonna see something and paint a picture. You dig? So. When I went there, I seen it, and I just came, brought it back. I love my city. I fuck with the city. I fuck with Dallas. I fuck with Arlington and Fort Worth, if you dig. So. And one more thing, you can't do it out there. It's like 10 wine poppies there. I don't give a fuck who watching this shit. When it come down to Dallas, Fort Worth, it's only one of me. Facts. You ain't going to find another. It's, it's going to be me just like it's going to be them. You know what I'm saying? But And even though it's not a, another wine poppy there, you got to get what I'm saying. It's 10 of me. Talented, image. Smart, know how to do it here. Is you you gonna have one or the other? You're not gonna really have a few niggas that got all three. You know what I'm saying? And I got that for sure. Tell us about welcome to the party. Uh, mixtape. My boy S. Witt sitting right here next to me produced more than half the mixtape. Yeah, S. Witt. What's Yo, going on, man? What's the deal, man? How you getting the producing game? Man, I've been the same thing as him. I've been doing it for a long time. I've been. Uh, I've been out there in the ag. I'm uh, originally from uh, Shreveport, Louisiana, and um, I've been out in the ag so long that I kind of built my own name. Me and my uh, my younger brother Sean Weezy, shout out for my boy. But um, yeah, we uh, we was out there made a name for ourselves. You know, a lot of people got their start in my studio. You know, and then I just went on to start getting placements here and there. And my my most recent one that everybody know is um. Rizzo, Rizzo, and Peso, Peso, Flow One. Yeah. Yeah, I did that. And then I started drop. I've been dropping producer albums like DJ Khaled, like showcasing uh, the talent around. And also, mostly, I want to showcase the talent that should be in the forefront, too. You know what I'm saying? So it'll be projects mix, mixed up with a whole bunch of uh, people that you might know and some that you should. Real quickly, co-sign some people that we should know. Oh, man, I like, of course, my man, Juan Poppy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> he yeah, ver- you're right he about verified. that. But, uh, yeah, um, we got uh, we got Juan Poppy. I got my uh, my boy, B. Fields. Uh, like, uh, that's my brother. I've been knowing him since we was kids. Um, I, like, I don't want to get to saying too many names because then it's going to, then y'all going to have some people at my head. Right. But, like I, like if you just follow me, uh, like you're gonna see it coming. Uh, like I got a project coming with my boy Dutch. 
You know what I'm saying? That one's going to be crazy. I'm like, he one of the hardest rappers in Arlington. The, how, how did you and Juan Poppy link up? We linked up in the 14K okay. days, you know? I'm like, I was at the studio, I'm like, I'm like with Cam. I came in as a producer, and then we just started. Um, we, I'm like, me and him always, me and him always had a connection. We were like, we was cool, you know what I'm saying? Because I liked how he moved. He reminded me of me. Do y'all have a, like a brand of glasses or something? I'm looking at these hoes. I just, these hoes yeah. just so fly. I'm just yeah, this uh, the weed poppy brand, you know what I'm talking about? For real? <laughs> nah. Oh man, that shit, them shit's hard. <laughs> man, Juan Poppy, man. You, what, you call yourself the Jill guy? Man, shit, I'm one of the originators of this, of this, of my generation, heirs of this shit. Man, break down the Jill guy, man. Let's 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 define that real quick. Uh, when I say Jill guy. I started flipping coins when I was young. Like, I'm really gifted with this shit. And I just, I say it, but people take it wrong because they don't understand it. Like, I can juggle. You know what I'm saying? Like, my daddy always told me if you could juggle, if a man can juggle, he can do a lot of things. You dig what I'm saying? So, I'm just, the, I feel like I'm the king of that. I'm, I'm one of the inspiring people that put this shit out there for people of my generation and show motherfuckers that it's a different way you can get some money. So, let, let's let's play a game. Man, it's, 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 Pack season, man. Nigga down bad. Down bad. Got, bitch got about some racks. Understand me. Okay. What's the move? You know what the move is. It's Jill Finesse. I did it to biz. <laughs> For sure. But I'm saying, and like I did, I did 10 of those. In one, in one year? No, I'm just saying over my spin, I can, oh. you know what I'm saying? That's I 10 easy. I'm not capping. Like, I've been doing this. What's the one jug where you surprised yourself? I ain't even know I had that in me. Man, I hit a jug with with my baby one time with me a daughter, and it was a great jug. And she, it was on some funny shit though. Like I had to go to the mall for some shit. I ain't gonna put too much out there. And I was meeting for somebody for a jug, and like I just, I had my baby with me. Like me, it was out here. I think she was doing features or some shit. And like we had to get the money. Like we were living together, shit, trying to pay bills and shit. You dig? And so it was on. It was on some shit like uh, somebody wanted some light check stuff. Or some shit. It was some simple shit, but it's something I never forget because I had my baby with me. My baby know her daddy jug. Like she walk around like my daddy the, the jug doctor. You dig what I'm saying? So now, nah, now nah, this, this is this is for real. So I was holding her hand. I just never forget. us like speed walking to the car when he got the bread. You know what I'm saying? Like yes. Now, that's just a story that I remember. That's probably the 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 most recent finesse story I remember. Yes. My daughter definitely knows her daddy's a judge doctor. So, being the, you know, what do you enjoy more, you know, when it comes to jugging all your music? Man, I enjoy the memories, bro. I don't do none of that shit. You got to think about, like, I was never no ro robber. I never sold weed. Like, you know how niggas out here, they got the grams for sale. Like, people look at my story, and you know what I'm saying, think it's funny or look at some type of way, but it's like, they going to call the weed man every day. You gonna pick up your phone, you gonna text the weed man every day looking for the weed, but like, you know what I'm saying? Like I just that I wasn't in none of that. I ain't finna kick no door or nothing. What's more in you? This music shit or music. That's what that's what I meant by that saying, like, I I think about the memories. Even when I talk about it in my music, this shit's not recent. I didn't just go hit no jug and come here. You know what I'm saying? Like I ain't judged in like three years. Like, you know what I'm saying? About three, two years, something like that. Now, let me ask you this, man. Back when you was going through your shit, you know what I'm saying, you had a little controversy in Fort Worth, you know what I'm saying? Right. You feel like the city turned their back on you? Uh, I did it first. I ain't going to sit here and cap. I did it first, but I feel like I've learned a lot and I understand more now. But I feel like me acting like that and being like that was a part of my process to even understand all this shit. I do feel like they turned their back on me, though, you know, a few people. But that's for people that don't understand the industry and don't understand this shit. So did you and Skinny fall out during that time and y'all recoup? Like, nah, me and Skinny, me and Skinny never fell out. When the shit first happened, you know what I'm saying? I was actually in the studio with somebody from Hood Fame. It was one of close close friends of mine on some business shit. I know artists. It was somebody that deal with them. And we happened to all be together. You know what I'm saying? I shout out Super Dave. I was in the studio with Super Dave when it, when everything popped up too. And I called Skinny. I went outside when everything first happened before I called anybody. I called Skinny. I'm like, bitch, I don't know when the next time I'm gonna see you. I said, this shit probably finna go up. You know what I'm saying? And I'm finna try to do something with this shit. And that's what people don't understand. Like, it was a big talk, but it was like, 
I'm just God, just finesse. They should have thought about that. You know what I'm saying? Like, like as soon as it went up, I was already on the line. Like the president, I was already on the red phone. You know what I'm saying? I called skin like bitch. I don't know, cause I knew it was so big that I don't know if I could fuck with my partner, my brother, just cause of, you know what I'm saying. It was shit like that, the little Uzi verse shit, the print shit, just that 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 banner is like it's big. You dig what I'm saying? So I called my brother and I told him, I love you, bitch, and, and I'm gonna see you at the top. You know what I'm saying? And right after that shit happened, he got signed Supreme. You know what I'm saying? Like me and Skinny been at this shit for years. We used to steal clothes together to go to shows. Like Skinny is a nigga that's been doing this shit a long time. It's a reason why he sound like that. It's a reason why I look and sound like this and I know what I'm doing. Like, it's not no overnight shit. If it's one thing you could take from uh and give to another artist that you after all the years in this career, a piece of advice, what would that be? Stay down, let let yourself grow. You go through a lot of stages in this shit. Don't give up. Keep keep going through the stages. What is something that you did to beat the discouragement of the, this the rap career? Like, cause we all go through the stages where we feel like, is this shit really worth it? Am I really gonna make it? Is it time to do something else? What was something you did to beat that? Man, I'm still, I still got my fist up right now. Some some days I wake up, I ain't gonna sit here and cap, cause I tell wit all the time. People like S. Wit keep me motivated. You know what I'm saying? And like my, my close corner, my inner circle. This shit is definitely not easy. Especially when you've been in, in it this long. Shit, I just, the music, my talent kept me going. Me me doing something and looking at it like, damn, this shit. And hearing what everybody else got to say about it. So fast forward, 2019. Yeah. Here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So obviously you got a plan. Yeah. What What is the plan for Juan Poppy, man? What, what do you got cooking up? Uh... Really, I'm just cooking up, putting myself out there, showing the people who I am and what I am, and also delivering the messages. Got to get the messages through. Talk to my young people. Show them, show them the way. I'm giving game now. You know what I'm saying? For a long time, I had a lot of game, and I only gave it to bitches. All the bitches knew the game for the niggas. You know what I'm saying? Because they was, they was helping me conduct this shit. You know what I'm saying? Then I would spread it out. But just giving them me and being real. I'm with a new label now. I'm signing Cam. Cam been around me for a long time. When I first started 14K and I just signed them less than a year ago, you know what I'm saying? And, and I signed and two weeks later I went to L.A. So I only been back, you know what I'm saying, some weeks. I shot a video, everything, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just going to get y'all the real, bro, and show and show motherfuckers that. Oh, whole mixtape, though, I forgot. We, it's a lot of shit going on right now. Yeah, yeah. What's the name of the mixtape? Welcome to the party. Uh, when do we, ETA? When is it dropping? Uh, Christmas, December twenty fifth. Yeah. We also got a party on Cam. Um, uh, November twenty ninth, Cam, y'all pop out. All the females, we gonna have all the bad bitches in that bitch. All the real niggas in that hoe. Live DJ drinks. We in that hoe. Super turned up. It's on Avenue J, in uh, in Grand Prairie, of Arlington three sixty. On the twenty ninth, we turn all the way up. Black Friday. C No Skinny Luciano Juan Poppy. We definitely in the building. What's cooking out there in that Arlington Fort Worth area, man? It seemed like a lot. It seemed like y'all niggas is cranking shit out like ATL right they now. They've been they been cranking it. Shit is crazy, bro. So you got the new mixtape coming out. You got the what? Give them like one or two songs that they should be on the lookout for. Uh, I got a song called Surf. Um, and I got a song called Fishbowl. And I'm basically on my music, so people know. I'm just talking that shit. I'm popping my shit. I did a lot. Like, I really do a finesse, man. And this this story that I'm kicking, this nut, it's not no lies. When you hear this shit, like, just take it in and it's real. How funny it's saying it's real. And that's how you got to take Juan Poppy. Like, I was like the Grinch out here, but player. You know what I'm saying? Imagine a player Grinch. You dig what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> that's me. You dig? With uh, Pootie Tang. You know, I'm on that. I've been on that. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just older now. And even though I'm not on it, I'm about to just brand it around my music. So y'all can understand the party. Welcome to the party. What's the last party you went to where you was like, man, this shit turned up, man. What, 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 what is the last time you just enjoyed yourself and had fun? Because when you think of party, you think about like, you know what I'm saying, yeah. house party type shit, whatever, yeah. club type shit. Yeah, yeah. What was the last time Juan Poppy just had fun at a party? Shit. Nigga like me, I damn near can't ever have fun. I have fun by just chilling. 
Vibing out, smoking some weed. My partner's man chilling with a female. You know what I'm saying? My life's so hectic and shit, so crazy shit. That's that's about the only thing I'm gonna do to just really enjoy myself. Shit, everything else is work. Take us through a day in the life of a work day. You know what I'm saying? Your nine to five. What does that look like? Uh, shit. I ain't working no job. I ain't never been good in no jobs. You know, it's been a long process of understanding that jobs weren't for me. So I got tattoos on my face. I got green hair. How I'm coming, it just it just ain't a. I can I can talk and fuck with jobs, but just nine to fives that don't work with me. No, nah, but I'm saying like if if somebody was to follow you for eight hours a day, your yeah. work day, what you consider a work day, what yeah. would that look like? I'm doing music and chasing the dream every day of my life. If you're doing this shit and you're not, you shit, you it's pointless. Like I swear to God, on my kids, you guys, this nigga next to me, bro. He probably ain't seen the nigga like this, like. To just be this hungry and like I'm gonna press. You know what I'm saying? Like I can't I can't wait till they see this shit and understand it. Mm-hmm. I can't wait till they understand this shit. Now, let's say you couldn't rap for some reason, but you could do anything in or around music. Yeah. What would that be? Uh I would cut hair. Cut hair? I would definitely cut hair. I'm super good at the clippers. Rock and juggle. I gotta say it again. You know what I'm saying? What, like, what is the throw of the shit you done juggled? Like uh, yeah. I done juggle everything. Like I, I used to always go to the store. I, I got taught how to juggle when I was young. You know what I'm saying? Like niggas is not on my level when it comes down to shit like this. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Like, I, bro, Cause I was like, I was like listen about that though, shit look, in my mind it, and I can't even fathom it. Put it like this. If you if you see me grab some dice and throw them, you'll be like, I understand now. Yeah. If you just see me shoot dice, you'll be like, okay, I understand. Okay. Like this not no game with him, like. I know I'm saying it and I talk about it always funny, but like no, it's serious. Yeah. Actually I'm just I'm just good with it, bro. Shit like that. I always been like that. Where's the thoroughest place that this music has take you where taken you where you receive the most love? Like a lot of niggas say they go to Mississippi and get a lot yeah. of love or they go to Shreveport and get a lot of love. And I ha- I haven't even been nowhere, bro. I ain't even been in Houston, but the first place I've been to was LA. Like, I've never been to Houston. And like I, I got on a plane with no oh, you money. You never been to Houston, or you never been to Houston for for the music. I never been to Houston, period. And I oh. and I went to L. A. on some crazy ass shit. Right. Yeah. I never been to no place. Man, you gotta hit that Houston, bro. That's bro. That's. I that's, fuck. I fuck with Houston. I fuck with the whole T. S. F. I fuck with uh. Shout out uh. uh South Samurai. That's my brother. My, my Mexican homie. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. We got the uh. Welcome to the party coming. Yeah. yeah. Let's say. You know, I'm a nigga that's, I'm just trying to figure it out. You know what I'm saying? If I pop your your, your mixtape in, your tape in, what's going to be the song I need to turn to to listen to to figure this shit out? Uh, you're going to listen to 3 a.m. in L.A. 3 a.m. in L.A. Yeah, because, like, most of my songs, all the songs, when I say welcome to the party, I mean, like, all my songs is a vibe. Like, if I'm talking about something, I, I got a song on, on the mixtape called Enough. And like it's like uh, I'm saying enough, but it's like four in the morning. I can barely breathe. Finna pass out. I've been smoking too much. You know what I'm saying? We on some shit like every song is a real vibe. Like when I said 3 a.m. in L.A. It was it was 3 a.m. in L.A. I was in the studio with D.K. from the G.S. Boys. I ain't let him get on the song. I'm drunk on the do say. It's we up. We here. You know what I'm saying? So every song is like right where I am when I'm doing kind of. You know what I'm saying? Now, Instagram has said that they are probably finna take away likes and showing the number of followers. Do you think that's gonna help or hurt niggas who use that platform to showcase their music? It's gonna hurt because I believe, I come from an era to where I believe in all that. Not to say I believe in fake followers, but if you wanna go spend some money and invest in something and have your, have your shit looking right, like you popping your shit, and then you wanna get on your feet and go try to sell your shit to work, I believe in that. You know, but. It is what it is. I don't believe in you popping your shit, then you pull up and you ain't what it is, though. Right. You know what I'm saying? I believe in good talent, and if you're not there yet and you need a boost in your social media, I believe in that. Now, how out of line is Lil Fizz for fucking on his bandmate's baby mama? I just seen that today. That's it's fucked. That's fucked up, though. That's fucked up. There ain't no player shit. He ain't, he ain't no people there. How how would you uh, handle that, bro? I just would have had to cut him out. Me being 28 now. Probably back in the day, I'd have been on some other shit. But right now, I'd have let her go. 
I'd have, I'd have fucked with my kid. It would have just gave me more to go get a better bitch and let me just go ahead, boom. You know what I'm saying? Because that's out of there, bro. That's some whole ass shit. Like, I can't respect you like that. And then the other bad man fucked on his mama. Like, she gets. <laughs> Oh, they going, they going up now. They going crazy. <laughs> it's, it's too much, bro. Yeah. Man. Man, you think OJ did it, bro? <laughs> I don't know, fool. <laughs> and I ain't gonna lie, you know what I'm saying? I want, I want Pop and Head to sit here and just think like, maybe, maybe OJ didn't do it, bro. You know what I'm saying? They talking Twitter about the glove. Yeah, he on Twitter going crazy. I'm like, nigga, you got, you got a murder. If I did do it, this is how I would do it. Like now, once that once that came, I was I was so I rolled for him. I was hurt that OJ that OJ did it, but you did that shit, nigga. Hey, wait, wait, wait. What, what's all? Hey, Takashi, get out, man. He hit you for that beat, man. You gonna you gonna sell it to him, man? And the song is called "I Snitched." Nah, I snitched. I did it. It ain't. It ain't. It ain't nothing. It ain't no price that you can put on something that I stand on, man. I'm gonna uh, stand on some ten toes every time. You know what I'm saying? All right, Whether I did some whole shit or not. What if, what if it's not called? I'm a snitch. What if it's just you man? The beat. I mean, <laughs> at the like at the end of the day, business is business. My personal feelings about a uh, person because I might work with somebody and I might not too much care for them personally, but they're a good artist. You know what I'm saying? So business is business. You know what I'm saying? Like. So, uh, like, I believe, like Charlemagne said, that he going to come home and he going to blow up because it's a different day and age. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like, uh, yeah, I believe way, he going to blow up, you know what I'm saying, because it's suckers. okay. That's way most suckers than it is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Once, once Drake slid by, uh, like, when they found out that he had a ghostwriter, I knew there was a whole new game. Popeye's chicken sandwich or Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich? Popeye's, man. Hey, listen. We we been we been having this conversation and we on this motherfucker right now. Real life street stars, man. Amen. Popeyes, bro. I put this on my life. On God's the best sandwich I ever ate in my life. You got to be bullshit. Listen bitch. though. <laughs> Listen though. The best sandwich I've ate in my life, bro. As soon as I bit it, I already knew. I knew. I said, damn, bro. That whole super good. Like, bro. I'm glad I waited in line type shit. Like, listen though. I waited like a week because I was like, I ain't gonna fuck with the house in L.A. So in LA, they was taking it super serious. I'm talking about they niggas out there getting beat up. Like, they jumping through the window. Like, all them videos, half of that shit was in LA. You got to think about it. Shit that was going by, I was there when that shit was going on. Like, you know what I'm saying? Bro, I bit that hoe. I couldn't believe it, bro. Hey, let's say you in line to get a sandwich and a nigga in front of you get shanked. What's your next move? I'm leaving. <laughs> hey, listen, though, I was, I was dead broke, right? So I, I ain't had no money. I, went, I had to go to the shelter in LA. So niggas don't know this is behind the scenes story, fool. So I was trying to judge this shit out and I put it on the internet. I went to this shelter down there on Skid Row. You know what I'm saying? I'm by myself, fool. Never been to LA. I got no family out there, bro. Nothing. I was just me, one poppy. You know what I'm saying? I go in that hole. Nigga, I stabbed over a hot dog, bro. So listen, I, I feel like the nigga trying to set me up, fool. I don't know the nigga. He from Compton. He's in here talking to me. He was like, I'm going to go to the restroom real quick, bro. Real quick. On my mama, I know he thinking still to this day. I ain't never seen that boy again, bro. Oh yeah, people. When he see this and when he see more shit, he gonna remember that shit. Cause I was telling him I'm an artist from Texas. He was talking crazy. Fool, that nigga turned the corner, nigga got stabbed over a hot dog. I instantly left that hole. Instantly left. I'm gone. Mama, I I jumped on the plane. I'm gone. Bro got stabbed over a hot dog in L.A. Skid Row, bro. No cap. I didn't eat it. I'm gone. I didn't want it. I'm gone. Man, you know, nigga. <laughs> I was in a shelter, bro. Real, bro. Yeah, cause, yeah. cause, but I'm not gonna lie. I just seen when I I went on Skid Row when we was in that when I went seen to LA. It, it and I seen homeless people everywhere. It's not that bad to be homeless, and man, it would look like people because oh, yeah. people living on the beach and shit. Oh, yeah, cause they they out there fucking having babies and everything in tents in LA. They doing it all. They doing drugs. They out there living. They sweeping. Hey, I'm so they out there mopping and shit. Like the bitch get up in the morning to sweep on the street and everything. Like like a real house. That's yeah. what I'm saying. So is it? Let's say is a the homeless being being without shelter in LA worse than being without shelter in Dallas? Definitely, definitely worse. I don't know how I did it. I don't know how I'm right here right now. I'm telling you, fool. Like I can juggle. Yeah. 
the, the only thing, because I have a I have a homeboy in real life. He's a professional, like, like he's a he's a uh, a nomad. Like he just oh, like he'll go to Mexico, all over that shit, down right. to the bay, and just be outside. He got a little tent, look, and that's what he do. So. Nah, for real, <laughs> nah, for real. <laughs> you just see the deal. You already right. know, for real. <laughs> what level of freedom is it to have that level of courage to do some shit like that, bro? Change my life. Change my life, bro. That's probably gonna be why. I touch these M's like I'm about to. I, I always knew I, I had something and I always felt it. I always was rapping and shit. But how I feel right now, the experience that I seen, like being in LA and like looking to the side and seeing all the palm trees, like I'm, I'm one, I want, and I did everything here. Imagine everything I did and then going there and like looking at the beach and like inspiring my dream, going to the studio, meeting Scott Storch and just, you know what I'm saying? When I heard them tell me, I ain't had to ask nobody else. So, man, it's just, it's, I'm just listening to your story. So, it, going through all that and, you know, evolving into, now that you have a different outlook on things, when you do touch that first M, what you going to do with it? I'm a, I'm definitely by my mama's house. That's the first thing I'm going to do. Uh, my daddy died, like, five years ago. And, like, that's, my mama just shit, I just be stressing over this shit. Like, my story is so damn crazy. I just want to get her out the way. Because I ain't even doing this shit for me no more. This shit for him. This shit for my kid. This shit for the people next to me. I'm so tired. It ain't about me no more. I really don't even give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? It's just, I can't even change my life now. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm so stuck in this shit. It ain't no getting out. And that's outside of the street shit. I got real people that been watching me for years. Like, Peanut. I don't know if y'all know Peanut. He from Dallas. Peanut know me. He used to manage and shit. He managed me six years ago. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think he was, like, young black manager. So I remember he was from Dallas, and he was reaching out to me. It's just, like, certain people that the the consumers wouldn't know, they don't understand. Like, I'm I'm stuck in this shit. You can laugh all day. It's, it's so crazy because I'm stuck. And even if I want to go like this, it's, it, I'm here. So, man, so leave them leave with something before you get out of here, man. Right. Tell, tell them something about yourself, about the project, whatever. Let Sound off. It's on you. Uh, Juan Poppy Poppy shit, man. Y'all stay t- tuned in. Shout out to the whole city. Shout out to all the artists, man. I'm loving everything. I'm watching everybody from the casinos to the, the Goyeos to the Carter Parks to the Tommy Tools to the Yellow Beezies to the Trap Boy Freddies uh, to, to the Mo 3s to everybody in Dallas. You know what I'm saying? To Arlington, too. Shout out to Arlington Splurge. Everybody, TSB with my brother for life. You know what I'm saying? And just shout out to everybody, man. You know, it's all love. Man, long time coming. Me and Juan Pop been trying to get in for I don't know how I got that. Yeah, I had to call, man. Yeah, that nigga, hey, that, that's one persistent ass nigga. That's why you know he gonna make some shake. Uh, yeah, so. man. Shout out to Cam Music Group, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I really appreciate Cam. They've been putting a lot of artists on, bro, for over 10 years. I don't know if y'all know Cam, Big Dre, nah, Big Melo, Biz, Cam Music Group, bro. Bro, some of the artists y'all know from the, uh, the Runnies and everybody, bro, went through Cam and they came through the studio. And they, they ain't really got what they needed, bro. And I'm here to do that. You know what I'm saying? So I'm here to put that on, man. Cam Music Group, man. We turned up. That's what it is, man. Juan Poppy, man. You are a real-life street star, bro. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Shout out real street stars, nigga. Moolah. Hey.